This screencast is a demonstration of how to compute a polynomial curve fit in Excel. We start with some given data, in this case the pump curve data from a Gould's GT10 pump obtained from the Granger website. We start by making a plot of the data. Here's the flow rate versus head data. Flow rate is our x variable, horizontal axis variable. Select the data, go to insert, scatter plot. Always use a scatter plot for engineering applications. Don't use a line plot, which is over here. Doesn't work the way you want it to. Use a scatter plot, and we'll use this space right here. Before we go any further, let's label the axes. Once we've done the insert plot command, the ribbon shows us additional um, tabs here. So there's a chart design and a chart format tab. The chart design tab has an add chart element option here. We'll select axis title primary horizontal axis. This is going to be our flow rate. Uh, double click in the space, command all on a Macintosh, control A on a Windows machine, and we say Q or let's say flow rate GPM, and then again chart element primary vertical, double click command A, and this is head and units of PSI. Up at the top here, this title doesn't really add anything, we're going to delete it, and that generates a little bit more vertical space. Click on any one of the data points, and that selects the entire series, and then right-click, add trend line. The default is a line, or a linear curve fit, and in this application we're going to create a polynomial curve fit, so select polynomial, and then we can adjust the order, increasing or decreasing as necessary. Avoid the temptation to increase the polynomial to a very high order. Ultimately, it becomes a interpolant, not a curve fit. So for this application, a quadratic fit works pretty good. Uh, let's just go cubic for this demonstration. If we scroll down further in this little uh, side formatting panel, we can display the equation and display R squared. Both of those are what we want. I'm going to click on the displayed equation and drag it over to a good spot here and the font's very small so if I go to the home tab I can increase the font size to maybe 11 or even 12 make it a little bit easier to see notice that the coefficients are written in decimal format 0 0.0001 0 0.0002 etc this is a not a useful format for our purposes because we want more significant digits. So I can select the, uh, as I click inside this equation and format trend line label. Label options come up here and the format code for the display of these numbers is by default general. And if we choose scientific, we get scientific notation with two decimal places. Uh, I would always argue that for our intermediate calculations, use lots or display lots of digits. So five or even six would be okay. It's one thing to carry the digits in our internal calculations. It's another thing to report uh, too many digits. So let's display several at least for now. Uh, it's a bit hard to read because of the grid lines. We could, could use a solid line and a solid fill. Not a helpful color there, solid white. And that, um, causes the display here to blank out what's behind it. So, so far, this is pretty good. We've got our R squared term, which is a measure of the goodness of the fit and the coefficients. And we could read those off and uh, take, take these coefficients and put them into a subsequent analysis, for example.